Hello African Gold Growers, how are you today? Welcome to African Gold Growers Academy and welcome to a new video of the money series. Today we are going to talk about fiat money, uh, the agreement of Bretton Woods and its implications in the economy of Africa. It will be a very interesting video. Now, is, if this is the first time you visit us, welcome to African Gold Growers Academy. In this place, we are going to share with you the most powerful knowledge to grow literally gold in Africa. It means start a strategic business with low risk, with low investment. We are going to share with you entrepreneurship knowledge. We are going to share with you personal development uh, knowledge, business models, many, many, many areas to make your path as entrepreneur, as a social entrepreneur, as an African entrepreneur more easy. We call Africa and Gold Growers Academy because we literally believe we can grow gold in Africa. We believe that uh, build a strategic business that starts small but grow uh, big, dream big, uh, are the real solutions for Africa. Business that can solve strategic things in Africa like sustainability, like agriculture, like social business, attending the real needs of Africa, doing by Africans is the real solution for our continent. Now, welcome to this video, so let's start. Hello African Gold Growers, how are you today? Welcome to this new video. In the last video, we talked about what is money. But in this video, we are going to go deeply about what is fiat money, what was the Bretton Woods Agreement, and its implications in the African economy. So, let's start talking what is fiat money. Fiat money is the type of money that is currently used around the world. It's used by the central banks of the countries and it's not backed by any type of material or physical good, such as gold or silver. Instead, its value is based on the trust that people have in the economy and in the government that issues it. Central banks are in charge of using fiat money and controlling its supplies in the economy. In most countries, the central bank is an entity independent of the government, although it is often regulated by the tax authorities. Fiat money is valued relative to other currencies and assets in the economy. Generally, the value of fiat currency is measured by its exchange rate, which is the amount of one currency required to buy another. The exchange rate fluctuates constantly based on the supply and demand for the currency and can be influenced by economic and political factors. Fiat money is used in a form of notes and coins, and is used to carry out transactions and purchase goods and services in the economy. Banks also use fiat money to lend to individuals and business. In general, fiat money is the most common medium of exchange in the global economy and is used by the vast majority of people around the world. In short, fiat money is used by central banks and is not backed by any physical asset. Its value is based on the trust that the people have in the economy and in the government that issues it, and it's used in a very common in the global economy. Now, let's talk about the Bretton Woods Agreement. The Bretton Woods Agreement was signed in 1944 and establishes the US dollar as a global reserve currency. Interesting, no? This means that the value of the other world currency will be fixed in relation to the dollar. In addition, the countries agreed to maintain the stability of the exchange rates of their currency in relation to the US dollars. To do this, central banks had to keep dollars reserves in their coffers. Hmm, interesting. Bretton Woods Agreements benefits the United States because it's allowed the dollar to become the de facto currency in, of the international trade and increase the demand of the dollars around the world. Furthermore, the con convertibility of dollar into gold means that countries that held it could exchange their dollars for gold at a fixed rate. 
This allowed to the United States to maintain financial and economic hegemony in the world. So we can understand now where the, going, the things going. However, for many African countries, the Bretton Woods systems meant that their economies became vulnerable to the fluctuations in the US dollars. As the United States battled inflations and recessions, it began printing more dollars, causing its value to decline relative to other currencies. This caused the dollar reserves of African countries to be devaluated and their purchasing power to decrease. Put attention to this and I will repeat again. As the United States battled inflation and recessions, it became printing more dollars, printing more dollars, causing its value to decline relative to other currencies. This caused the, U the dollars reserves of African countries to be devaluated and their purchasing power to decrease. Furthermore, African countries did not have enough dollar reserves to maintain the stability of their own currencies. Therefore, Many African countries were forced to devaluate their currencies to stay in line with the dollar. This led to the inflation and rising prices, which affected the poorest people on the continent. I want to make an emphasis again. Therefore, many countries Many African countries were forced to devaluate their currency to stay in line with the dollar. This led to inflation and rising prices, which affected the poorest people of the continent. In short, the Bretton Woods agreements allowed to the United States to maintain the global economy dominate but had a negative impact of African economies and another ones, but we are going to talk about today about African economies. The stability of the US dollar at the cost of the devaluation of other currencies means that many African countries were unable to maintain the stability of their own currencies and faced economic difficulties in the following decades. This sounds very colonialist, isn't it? I need you reflect about this. I need you read more about fiat money, more about the Bretton Woods agreements. But let's explore, before you do your own research, let me end this video exploring how the Bretton Woods agreement affected Africa. The Bretton Woods agreements allowed to the United States to establish its financial and economic hegemony in the world. But for many African countries, the system means that their economies become vulnerable to the fluctuation of the US dollars. African countries that depend on the exports and had a large amount of dollar reserves were especially affected. As the United States struggled with inflation and recessions in the 60s and 70s, they began to print more dollars and they abandoned, it, they abandoned it completely the gold standard, which caused its value to decrease in relation to the other currencies. This meant that the dollar reserves of African countries were devaluated and their purchasing power decreased. Additionally, African countries did not have enough dollar reserves to maintain stability on their own currencies. It's not like curious that always United States have more advantages of other countries that produce raw materials. Okay, let's continue. To stay in line with the dollar, many African countries were forced to devaluate their currencies, which led to inflation and increased prices in the region. This affected to the poorest people in the continent who had to pay more for goods and services they needed to survive. And let me tell you something. This is exactly the thing that's happening in the continent right now. After 2020, United States, Europe Union, 
and many other countries started to print more money to face the pandemic. And you know what? In global inflation hit directly to Africa. And this is exactly what is happening in Africa right now. But let's continue. Furthermore, the Bretton Woods agreements allowed developed countries to maintain control over global financial institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund, the EMF, and the World Bank, which allowed them to influence the economic policies of developing countries. Often, these policies were designed to benefit the interests of developed countries, which resulted in impositions of austerity policies and structural adjustments in African countries, which had a negative impact of economic growth and the well-being of the population. When an African country get a loan from the monetary fund, they have to pay in US dollars, not in their own in, in their own money, in their own yeah, in their own money. But if a rich country, if a European country acquire a loan from the monetary fund or from the World Bank, they are allowed to pay in their own money. This is not just and these make a huge, a huge depreciation of the African money, of the African currencies. In summary, the Bretton Woods agreements allow it to the United States to maintain its financial and economic hegemony, but had a negative impact of African economies. The stability of the U.S. dollars at the expenses of the devaluation of other cur cur currencies mean that many African countries could not maintain the stability of their own currencies and faced economic difficulties in the decades that follow it. It means that if a country has not control or not uh, economic um, stability, it will not have a political and a social stability. It's not coincidence. Everything is in the chain. Additionally, the control of the global financial institutions by developed countries allowed them to impose unfavorable economic policies of the African countries. So let's go to the conclusion, African gold growers. In conclusion, fiat currency is a crucial part of the global economy and is used by the vast majority of people all around the world. Also, it is not backed by any physical material or good. Its value is based on the truth that people have in the economy and the government that issues it. It's only paper. It's literally only paper. However, the Bretton Woods Agreement have a significant impact of the stability of African economies and led to devaluation of their currencies which resulted in the economic difficulties and hardship for many people in the region. The control of global financial institutions by developing countries also resulted in unfavorable economic policies being imposed on African countries, which further exacerbated the situation. It's important to remember that the global economy is complex and interconnected and policies and decisions made in one part of the world can have far-reaching effects, effects on other regions and countries. By understanding the history and impact of fiat currencies and global financial systems, we can work towards creating a more equitable and sustainable global economy that benefits everyone. We need to understand that as African gold growers, as, as Africans, we need to understand the monetary systems of the region and the, of the entire world. The real solutions of Africa are in the hands of the citizens of Africa. The real solutions of Africa is not brings more aids to the continent. 
It's changed the monetary system, literally. It's changed the fiat currency by others back it on gold or goods, like it's doing right now, for example, Ghana. Good job for Ghana. Ghana is changing dollars by gold. It's backing its economy by gold and not by US dollars. The same is trying to happen in Mali, in Burkina Faso. But guess what? France doesn't allow it. France don't want to bring back the gold of Mali and Burkina Faso. Because they understand if they exchange, the things will change fast in the region. The peace will come fast in the region. I don't want to deep, go deep inside. You know, I don't like to go deeply in, in political issues. But it's very clear. It's clear as water. It's important to remember that the global economy is very complex and interconnected. But we need to understand the economy to make the real change in the region. We are going to talk about more solutions. We are going to talk about another situations that are happening right now in the, in the continent. We need to understand the basis of the economy. The next video, we are going to talk about inflation and devaluation. It's very important to understand inflation and devaluation. Okay, so the next video after it, we are going to go deeply in another solutions that we can have as Africans to take care of our money and to increase the value of the currencies of Africa. Thank you for watching. I hope this video can, has helped for better understanding of the fiat currencies and how it works and its impact on Africa. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, write your comment and activate the notification bell. And remember, we grow gold in Africa. Bye bye.